Will you let us know, Lacey, when you want us to start? Yeah. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining Georgia Tech Parent and Family Programs for this webinar on student supporting your students' health. Your excuse me, supporting your students' mental health at Georgia Tech. We are joined by uh, Dr. Tiffany Hughes Troutman and Dr. Carla Bradley, who are going to uh, discuss uh, their PowerPoint slides with you, and then we'll have time for a question and answer at the end. So let me get this PowerPoint going. Okay. All right. Tiffany, I I'm not sure who I can go ahead and advance the slides here. Certainly. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, parents and families. Thank you so much for taking time to join us for the parent and family webinar uh, with Spudson at Georgia Tech, supporting your students' mental health. Dr. Bradley and I uh, will be uh, providing some information on our mental health services at Georgia Tech this afternoon. Uh, I serve as uh, director uh, for the Center for Assessment, Referral and Education affectionately known as GT Care, and Dr. Bradley serves as director of the Counseling Center. This first uh, the diagram just shows you uh, a, like a pictorial view of our mental health system. And as you can see, uh, we have a number of resources and departments at Georgia Tech to fully support your, your students' mental health and well-being. CARE is a single point of access. You'll see that at the top because students start with CARE to receive that confidential assessment. They're then referred to a number of departments uh, as I move left to right, starting with health initiatives, which focuses on prevention and well being uh, through those services. Then, STAMP Psychiatry uh, uh, has a number of services ranging from psychiatric consultation to uh, to groups to medication management. Uh, the Counseling Center and Dr. Bradley will share more about the full range of Counseling Center services and resources that they have, uh, as well as off-campus resources, including but not limited to uh, off-campus psychiatry or off-campus individual counseling. Next slide, please. Sorry, I'm trying that to advance it. Right. And as we're getting that next slide, I'll actually start to talk about CARE, which we'll, you will see shortly. Um, so CARE, which again is the Center for Assessment, Referral and Education, was opened in August of 2019 as the single point of access uh, for mental health resources and services on and off campus. We collaborate and communicate extensively with all of the units listed in the previous slide, plus many, many more to support your students' well-being. And we are comprised of a multidisciplinary staff. Uh, I'm a licensed psychologist, and the other team members that I have as part of the care staff are licensed uh, clinical social workers, licensed master social workers, licensed professional counselors. Um, and so we love that multidisciplinary focus to help serve the needs of students. And our goal really is to reduce those barriers and obstacles. We want to make sure students have access to the full range of services that they need to help them thrive and be well, reduce stigma and reduce barriers to access. Next slide, please. Thank you so much. So in CARE, we do provide mental health assessments, but also provide um, uh, case management follow-up. So a student comes to CARE and they receive a relatively rapid access appointment. It's a confidential clinical appointment where we get information uh, on their presenting concerns and their history and then make recommendations regarding what resources that they need as next steps. So they get that assessment, they get a care plan, which is a document. It's really an action plan that lists out all the referrals that we think that the, the student would benefit from receiving. Those could be on campus. We have a multitude of those as well as perhaps off campus recommendations. And then we meet with students for case management and follow up. So 
that's those are actually appointments for students that um, that need that follow up. And we also want to make sure that they got to where we referred them. So did you did you access that appointment and did you get the help you needed? Uh, additionally, CARE does provide crisis intervention. So for students who are experiencing a crisis in the moment, uh, we do meet for students meet with students to meet those needs. Um, I mentioned before that our services are, are, are for degree seeking uh, students at Georgia Tech. Those are all eligible for our services. Our services are at no additional charge. Um, I will note that we are providing telebehavioral help and we've been doing that consistently since the spring of 2020. So we do have an in office presence for students who need to be seen here, but we also meet with them virtually, which has met a lot of students needs. Uh, and just to be clear on the community that we serve, undergraduate and graduate students uh, who need that support as long as they are in a degree seeking enrolled program, but also students, you know, who may not know where to go. You know, what our kind of slogan is just come to care. We like that because some students obviously uh, know perhaps they have a, a pre-existing mental health history or maybe they've been working with the provider um, from their hometown or their community. So they they want to continue that care on campus and we can help them with that. But really the idea here is to come to care and we'll help student figure that out. We'll assess them. We of course know about the full range of services on campus and so we'll be able to to work with them to uh, figure out what that next be best step is. We also consult with faculty and staff who may meet with students so they want some guidance on how to approach a student situation or they just really want to connect a student with us who, who we know you know it's the best way students are actually in the classroom and in labs and then in their community there and so we want to make sure that we have that collaborative conversation with faculty and staff as well and now i'm going to turn it over to dr bradley he'll talk about the counseling center Good afternoon, parents. Hi, I'm Carla Bradley. I direct the Counseling Center here at Georgia Tech. And the Counseling Center is organized in a fairly traditional style in terms of what's offered in institutes of higher education across the country. We too have a professional staff of licensed psychologists, counselors, social workers. We have doctoral interns and advanced practicum students. We're accredited by the primary accrediting body for uh, counseling centers, and we use a short term model for individual counseling. I want to back up just a minute and clarify that since the inception of care as the single access point for mental health services on campus, we have realized a significant and very welcome reduction in wait times. And so we think that this model is a innovative and effective and increasingly more effective as we continue to streamline this model of um, the close collaborative relationship that the Counseling Center and CARE have. As you might imagine, if we were to have a private practice model within any counseling center in the country, um, students would not be able to be served because uh, the counselor student um, availability would be there would be so much more uh, demand than there would be opportunity. So this short term model or a brief model allows students to be seen for about a semester or so is usually what I uh, how I think about short term. And then the long term treatment that we make available to students is through groups. And I want to take a second to say that the research efficacy comparing how much better people get or how much better they feel uh, versus attending individual therapy versus attending a group really runs neck and neck. So we feel like we can serve the campus community in both a short term and a long term way in two different service modalities that have very good research efficacy and high rates of reported improvement. So next slide please. So the types of client services, some of which I just mentioned, are individual and group services. We do couples counseling for one pair, if one of the pair is enrolled. We have some testing and assessment services. We do referral both in-house and to external um, community partners for additional services where needed. 
GT Care Off does the first set of referrals many times, and then as we work with the student, we may find other issues or concerns that come forward or other needs that come forward. And we also have a, a clinical case management team who can act to refer students to additional needed services. We provide consultation to faculty, students, and staff, and parents. We do outreach, and we have a vibrant outreach program, which is um, <clears throat> a service that follows a public safety, public uh, community model, public psychology community model, so that we offer information to the campus and thereby reach many, many more folks uh, than we would were we simply to stay in-house and do uh, direct one-on-one -on -one counseling care. We do provide emergency coverage. We have a third party system who picks up the phone and um, can transfer to a licensed counselor 24 seven, um, particularly after hours and on weekends. And a member of my staff is always on backup call to assist if um, there is a need that is not able to be taken care of um, more rapidly by that third party system. We provide a multitude of online self-help resources and our website is fairly constantly changing and updated. Next slide, please. Additional services within the Counseling Center, uh, Let's Talk is a walk-in consultation that doesn't require students to fill out paperwork or to become a client of the center. It's just the opportunity to have a one-off problem-solving conversation with a therapist, a licensed professional. We do a variety of mindfulness programs because they've been shown to reduce uh, distress very effectively um, and increase resilience as well. We do wellness workshops. We have a um, collegiate recovery program that is available for a group of students on campus who have discovered that they have a relationship with alcohol or other drugs that is not supportive of their progress as a student. So we offer a recovery program for those students who want that specialized kind of attention. A peer coaching a program allows interested students to become trained at the paraprofessional level and offer some coaching services to students whose concerns may not raise to the level of uh, needing to enter, enter counseling per se, but they are assisted by having peer coaches that they can uh, talk with and turn to for additional support. Mental health screening days are days where um, we provide some, at this point, remote and online screening to students that allow them to self-evaluate a little bit and then have a conversation with us about results if the results are suggestive that talking with a mental health professional um, and perhaps being referred to GT Care for a full assessment would be uh, a good idea. WellTrack is an application that students can use. It's fairly popular in college counseling centers and when done um, pretty regularly, really assists the student in monitoring themselves, um, taking a look at where they are, how their mood and their energy uh, is operating and if they hit any rough patches, is there a particular pattern to that or did they need to uh, reach out for some additional support? The suicide prevention uh, program that we have here on campus is called QPR. That stands for Question, Persuade, Refer. It is a gatekeeper training that we offer to campus to help individuals who might otherwise feel a little bit on, um, stymied or uncomfortable or out of their bandwidth, so to speak. Um, it's a method of inquiring of someone who appears to be in distress or who a uh, friend or um, colleague or um, faculty member, professor or so on, uh, may want to do some follow up inquiry about where the student is at and, and whether or not they're entertaining some ideas about suicide. So this is a, a brief, a relatively brief training that's actually chock full of great information to assist the community uh, to care and collaborate with each other around um, students who may be uh, getting into some difficult 
some difficulties. And then biofeedback services are fairly um, self-explanatory, although I will say because they are hands-on and we are in a remote model right now, we are not offering our full complement of biofeedback services at this time. So next slide, please. Then we have a, a, a um, new and growing satellite counselor program. Satellite counseling is where a counselor who is employed by the counseling center is satellited out into the campus community into a host department. At present, um, we in the College of Engineering and College of Computing uh, partnered to house three counseling center clinicians and the program opened up uh, about a year and a half ago. There's a higher utilization rate of mental health services um, for members of these colleges. In other words, we looked at our aggregate data and saw that these are the three colleges over the past few years who have used us most frequently. And so that's where we decided we would start the program. So the official launch in October of 2019, I think we placed our first counselor in October of 2019. And then our second a few months later and our third in uh, January or February of 2020. We also received the good news recently that we are being funded for four additional uh, satellite counselors and the plan and the hope is to have one counselor in each of the academic schools here at Georgia Tech. So next slide please. Um, again just to to continue to describe the satellite counselor program. It does improve accessibility, normalizes, destigmatizes seeking mental health support. Students may um, engage with satellite counseling more readily because it's right there. They um, can walk in for consultations. Faculty staff can receive that same consultative service if they can have a concern that they want to discuss with a counselor and counselors can serve as consultants to mental health initiatives within those departments. So this has been a, um, it, it, it was a rapidly expanding program that got stymied a bit by COVID, but we're continuing our expansion plans and it's proved to be very popular without, throughout campus. And next slide, please. So also, talk about our colleagues in STAMPS Psychiatry. STAMPS Health Services has a psychiatric department and it's staffed by three clinical care coordinators who are master's level clinicians that assist in um, getting new patients, uh, referred students into the um, initial phases of the discussion of intake information and um, accessing them to psychiatric services. STAMPS has um, six board certified psychiatrists and they see all current undergraduate and graduate students, partners and spouses of undergraduate and graduate students, and language institute students. Their parameters are slightly different than those of the Counseling Center and GT Care. Uh, because they operate out of a different, uh, operating out of the student insurance. Um, the stamp psychiatry does not see faculty, staff, or postdoctoral employees and primary ADD, ADHD patients. And what they mean by that is they do not prescribe those medications. And so if your student has been diagnosed with that particular um, diagnosis then it's best to maintain their ongoing contact with the psychiatrist from their home community who continue uh, in medication management needs. The next slide please. On our next slide please. And so just a little more of the details about stamp psychiatry. They do transfer medication management for many medications, ADHD being the exception. Um, incoming students can transition from providers at home or previous schools if that is clinically appropriate indicated. They will um, coordinate assessments and evaluations 
through their care coordinators so that student actually is receiving two levels of comprehensive care there within the psychiatric clinic. There is an Asperger's or Autism Spectrum Disorder support group. Um, that kind of um, neuro, neurodiversity is actually fairly common here at Georgia Tech. And so this is a very valued um, service that can be provided for students who may be on the autism spectrum. Um, Stamp Psychiatry provides consultation with campus partners. They're involved in eating disorder treatment, the Counseling Center, GT Care, the Dean of Students Office, Office of Disability Services, and with primary care uh, medical providers there within Stamps. And they can also provide consultation with off-campus partners, therapists, previous mental health providers, and medical teams as needed. The next, next slide, please. Uh, Dr. Hughes Troutman is going to talk about health initiatives. Absolutely. So health initiatives is the well-being uh, education prevention and support department at Georgia Tech. They provide educational opportunities and individual guidance on those proactive preventative uh, aspects of well-being on a number of dimensions. And there are really three main areas in health initiatives. They focus on health education, on things like stress management, uh, sleep, uh, sexual health, and uh, alcohol and other drug uh, prevention uh, initiatives. They also have a community nutrition arm because they're uh, staffed by two licensed dietitians who provide nutrition consultations. Uh, they meet with students to support those nutritional goals, but they also meet with students who have diverse nutritional needs just to identify on campus and off-campus needs. They do that through clinical uh, meetings as well as through outreach. And then third, there's the voice sexual violence prevention education and advocacy arm uh, comprised of a uh, sexual violence prevention health educator and two confidential dedicated voice advocates who meet with students for confidential protected uh, advocacy meetings for students who have been impacted by sexual violence. Um, just to focus in on that health education piece a little bit more because more commonly you'll hear about the health initiatives programs are doing a lot right now to make sure that students have some face-to-face -face opportunities as well as virtual opportunities. But um, they do have wellness coaching, which is the one-to-one -one support virtually or, or in person. That is not counseling. It's, it's uh, motivational interviewing coaching for students who may want to work on some aspect of their well-being. So they meet with a, with a staff person who has been certified as a wellness coach. They have skill building through a number of programs to help to instill resiliency or to help with adulting, which is learning how to go to college and, and learn some of those skills or uh, financial well-being. So a number of skill building programs and as, as well as another a number of workshops. So students can pulse in to workshops on self-care or how to be mindful, how to sleep better. Um, that right banner has just a listing of the number of programs that they have that they some of them have been um, temporarily discontinued due to the, to the COVID pandemic like pet therapy. That's just one of them that's not happened, but but uh, some of many of the others are still happening virtually. They tr transferred their offerings into the virtual format quite successfully. Next slide, please. Um, another, a little bit more of a deeper dive. Again, I mentioned the com community nutrition arm of health initiatives has that nutrition counseling, which now is virtual or in person. Um, but also they do a lot of outreach. So a student um, may just want to learn more uh, about healthy cooking options. So they'll, you know, before the pandemic, they would, uh, they would go out and about on campus doing healthy cooking demos. They're doing those virtually now. Uh, or the intuitive eating program is very popular, um, as well as the body positive GT program, which really looks at that philosophy of healthy at every size, which is a nationally recognized philosophy and approach to well being for students who want to work on size acceptance and being healthy, making healthy choices independent of size. So it's a big shift in that mentality. 
uh, through nutritional uh, advising and counseling and outreach through voice. They uh, have continued their advocacy work virtually. They meet in person or they meet virtually depending on what the student needs. Again, they do provide that 24 seven confidential support for ind individuals who have been impacted by sexual violence or who identify as a survivor on campus. And that might be confidential um, advising support. It could be talking to the student about reporting options as the voice team does collaborate heavily with Title IX and other offices to help support students who are uh, who are involved in those situations on either end. Uh, on the prevention end, there's also a lot of education and training that the voice team provides uh, on consent, on how to be a good bystander in any situation in which a student needs to step in, uh, how to provide su survivor support if you have a friend or family member who's been impacted and you want to be that ally, that supportive person, and also just how to have a healthy relationship, uh, not necessarily a romantic relationship, but any healthy dyad relationship, how to thrive in that relationship. And so you'll again see some of those programs from nutrition, and voice to the right to give you an idea of, uh, of what's being offered here on campus through health initiatives. And uh, finally, we do have some contact information from all of the departments that Dr. Bradley and I have highlighted today. I will start with care, letting you know that our physical location is in the flag building. That's a Smith Gall Student Services building known as the flag building, the first floor, suite 102B. As I mentioned at the top, we are providing telebehavioral health services primarily now, but we do have an in-office presence every day for students who need to be seen face-to-face. -face. But students, all they need to do is to call us to start that appointment. They don't walk in due to the pandemic. We shifted that, but it's important to note the student can call and they'll get an appointment um, to meet with us. Um, all services, uh, for the Counseling Center or STAMP Psychiatry have to start and care. And we've also listed our website uh, and our hours are below. And that's CARE's contact information. Next slide. And similarly, uh, you see now in front of you the Counseling Center's contact information. We're also in the Smith Gall building up on the second floor. We have a website that I mentioned earlier, and we have a social media presence now um, that we are continuing to expand and um, is uh, a way of communicating with the student body as well as parents. So I would direct you toward our Facebook page and Twitter accounts. They're more active. We also have um, uh, hopes for continued expansion as we um, wish to reach more and more of the population. Next slide, please. And as stamps is in the student health services building up on the second floor. That's their contact information and their website. And the contact information for health initiatives. Uh, they are located in the Stamps Health Services building on the second floor in Suite 232. Um, and the phone number is listed there as well as their website. Health Initiatives has a really prominent social media presence as well. They have uh, a very interactive Instagram uh, as well as Facebook as well. And as I mentioned through the website, there uh, there's direct link with linkages to many of the in-person and virtual opportunities that they're offering for students at this time. Uh, and um, I believe at this point that, that now that you have our contact information, we want to share some emergency resources for you as well to make sure that you're aware that in the case of an emergency, we engage a system of campus partners to meet needs of students. Um, and those are as listed. There's the campus uh, police number, of course, the Office of the Vice President and Dean of Students, um, and uh, they uh, are comprised of uh, a number of staff, uh, including uh, uh, a number of deans, Associate Dean uh, Riggle and, and, and other Assistant Deans who serve on call and serve during the day to meet students' needs, provide student support um, to make sure that students thrive uh, through academic success, so they really, really partner really well with faculty and staff 
uh, to advocate for students and to make sure that students are aware of all their options academically. Um, the number for the, the voice advocates, there are two numbers, there are two of them, so there are, you'll see two extensions there. You can, you can call either number uh, equally and, um, and you will reach one of them or leave a message and, and they get back very promptly. The GCAL line is that such Georgia Crisis and Access line. Uh, we, we promote that number. It's a great resource for students who, who would need to access um, services um, after hours, of course, or maybe a friend can access that line as well as the National Suicide Prevention Line Lifeline. Uh, the Trevor Lifeline. As well as crisischat.org. And uh, finally, we um, would love to get feedback on resources. There's a QR code there for feedback. And I believe that that concludes the formal presentation that Dr. Bradley and I have for you. Uh, at this point, we're going to turn it back over to Lacey and her team of moderators who will assist us in uh, going through the question and answer period uh, of this webinar. OK, so thank you both for that wonderful presentation. I appreciate all of the information. I hope our families definitely got some of that. This uh, session will be recorded uh, so that you can um, uh, watch this later and look at the resources later. I'm going to go through a few questions now that we've we've had come in and um, whoever I guess um, just wants to take them. <laughs> um, so uh, Tiffany, I'll, I'll give you the first one or, or um, let's send you live here. What is the current wait time for a for a counselor at, uh, after they get the care assessment? So maybe I guess that's probably more for Dr. Bradley, so I apologize. And then I'll come back to Dr. Hughes Trapman. So let me pop over. Sorry. Sure. Yeah. Hi. That wait time waxes and wanes a bit as you might expect with the intensity of the semester, but at present it is in the vicinity of three to five days. Okay. And while I have you, um, how do students join a counseling group? If they want to join a group, how would they go about requesting that? So they, um, remember CARE as that single access point, they would contact CARE to be evaluated, and they can make that request directly to the evaluator and discuss um, what, their, what their needs are, and the evaluator can help um, match them with the group or groups that appear to be the most ap uh, appropriate. And that by saying groups plural, I'm thinking about maybe a course of life skills trainings as well as an ongoing um, therapy group, for example. Um, once that uh, evaluation has been done, then the names are forwarded to the individuals in the counseling center who are facilitating those groups and the facilitators will reach out with the student to um, have a, another discussion about their interest area and screen them into the group. Okay, uh, Dr. Bradley, also a question, what does short term model mean? Does that mean those requiring long ter long term care are referred out? Yes, yes, that's a pretty good distinction um, in terms of on campus or off campus. On campus, we see folks who have a need for supportive counseling or for counseling and therapy work for um, a brief time. And, and uh, you might recall I mentioned a little earlier that Brief can be thought of in terms of about a semester or so. Um, and we also have students who might have a, a course of a brief course of counseling, um, let's say during the second semester of their freshman year. And then at the top of their junior year, they come back, um, touch base with GT Care and say, you know, I had a successful course of counseling with such and such back up in the counseling center. I'd like to go back again and and uh, tackle this other issue that's come up. And um, 
So, so a brief course of counseling can be repeated several times throughout the student's tenure at Georgia Tech, which I guess is my point. But if somebody has a more long term, let's say they were in counseling for uh, a year and a half in high school and want to continue in therapy counseling uh, once they come to college and don't necessarily see an ending point to that, um, that that would be the type of student, one of the types of students' situations that we are likely to turn to our community partners to make an appropriate referral for. Another type of situation would be if the student has uh, an acuity level of concern that is beyond the scope of practice for the counseling center, then we would likely refer them off campus. And that might also be things like a very active eating disorder, um, active substance use disorder that might take some intensive outpatient treatment or even inpatient treatment to address. Those are the types of, of um, issues and concerns that are beyond our scope of practice in um, the short-term college mental health counseling center. Thank you. Uh, a couple of, of comments. Uh, wasn't aware of the many service offerings. Thank you. And then great news on the increased satellite offerings. So I thank you there as well from families. Uh, another question about uh, what types of coaching uh, peer coaching would cover. And how does one perhaps get get hooked or into the peer coaching program? So the peer coaches might handle things like um, acculturation to GT, like a student who is coming in feeling a little lonely, um, a little disconnected, uh, maybe a little surprised about now being in a a, a large lake of very, very smart students. They might not have had quite that uh, quite that experience in high school. So I would say uh, kind of soft difficulties, maybe some loneliness, homesickness, concerns about dating. Um, those are the kinds of things that peer coaches, just talking with a, a, a peer can be very helpful with. Um, we often make I believe Dr. Hughes Troutman can speak to referrals that may come through GT Care. And, and on occasion, we hear of students reaching out directly to the coordinator of that program, and that person um, will give them information about how to get an assessment done and um, discuss their interest in peer coaching. Tiffany, did you want to add anything to that from the perspective of your shop? Certainly, yeah. So as, as Dr. Bradley mentioned, um, some students are not quite sure. They may not have heard of, they may not have heard of peer coaching. They may uh, really discuss those lower level acculturation issues coming to campus and learning, you know, maybe being lonely or homesick or wanting to, to, to kind of discuss some of those um, coming to college issues. And we'll elevate peer coaching as an opportunity. Um, the student may hear about it some other way. They may go to a counseling center, let's talk um program and hear about that program as well but we um but that is um really a wonderful offering because students often feel very comforted talking to another student who's been through it you know who can support them without needing to go through a more formalized uh service sometimes that's a barrier to student mental health of having to go through our system but their peer coaches as dr bradley has highlighted go through a lot of training there's a lot of intentionality with that program to make sure that they understand uh, the mental health system, but also know how to support students appropriately. So um, I would just add that. Great. Uh, Dr. Hughes Trotman, um, a question here. Is it true that for non-critical patients, students in need of one-on-one -on -one counseling, the wait time is approximately six weeks? So I guess they're asking about, you know, how are wait times? I guess maybe they're hearing things from their student. That is not true. That um, that is, is is not a narrative that's supported by by data. Um, so currently in in care, 
non-urgent appointments we are at two days now if i look at the calendar if it's urgent they're seeing the same day so we look at the students needs in terms of getting them in that assessment uh, immediately or as soon as they need it or as soon as they want it sometimes students We'll have that appointment that day and they'll say, well, actually, it cannot can it wait till tomorrow I have class or something like that. So that is that is not uh, true uh, based upon the data that we have at this point. In terms of referring for a service beyond care, as Dr. Bradley mentioned, uh, there is uh, within those, I believe she she had uh, communicated that five it, about a week, about five days ish for that on campus referral is about average right now. Um, so that is that is something that's important to clarify. Um, if the concern is not within the scope of the counseling center for their for their short term model, then we will work with the campus provider in the community to help the student. And that's that's certainly not six weeks that that would be with certainly within the week because on the care side, we want to make sure that students have access to uh, to providers who are accessible. So we do a lot of research on our end to make sure that they're accepting new students and that they're accessible right now because of the pandemic. Mainly it's virtual counseling now. And so um, so that's that's the real time data that I'm that I like to update you with at this time. Uh, and another thank you. That was actually very helpful. Um, one of the questions from a, from a parent is about maybe doing some outreach because of the pandemic for students who may be concerned about dealing with post graduation and how they're dealing with with us being in the pandemic how how students are feeling so if there's any outreach and, and they ask maybe are we connecting with career services on that or is there any outreach in that aspect well there's there's certainly a significant amount of outreach and formally dr bradley would probably want to speak to the counseling center's expansive and formalized outreach um, i will speak briefly for care is that we are accomplishing our outreach through a student ambassador program so because of our um, of our clinical resources pretty much being uh, focused in house and making sure that we're meeting with students in a timely way so they can get those appointments We've trained a group of students who who work with campus partners to provide programming who are care ambassadors on behalf uh, of us. Um, and so that's been an effective way for us to to meet students needs um, as we look to expand. I, I did not, uh, I think, mention earlier, but wanted to is that care has also been given to additional staff positions um and that we're interviewing for right now uh, literally today the third interview is happening so that's exciting uh, but as we expand that's how we're accomplishing outreach um currently through care and i, I certainly carla i know that you can talk more about the counseling center's extensive outreach so Car carla before we pop over to, to you on outreach um before we leave tiffany um a parent's asking about their student has a screening tomorrow and she wants she has well I, i'm assuming she uh, the parent has some concerns about uh sleep uh may, maybe uh substance substance abuse uh, interfering with academics and a variety of different things uh, they're asking you know are, are those areas that a, a person may ask questions a counselor may ask questions just to kind of see what's going on to kind of probe any other issues that may be happening is that part of a normal screening is the question Absolutely, and the, the thing that's important to understand is that we have data, uh, we gather our data in a number of ways. One is a student has completed several forms that do assess a number of domains, including but not limited to uh, alcohol and other drugs, substance use, sleep, uh, many behavioral health indicators, their mood, their sleep, attendance uh, in class, how they've been impacted by the pandemic, diversity variables, there are three questionnaires they fill out. We have that data, but we also explicitly have uh, a, a screening protocol that addresses all of those dimensions verbally, which allows us to corroborate what's been what's been written on paper, but also just allows a student to talk more openly and freely about any of those concerns. So if a student has an appointment, every student will be asked about all of those behavioral health dimensions, um, including all of what you've mentioned and a lot more um, we are, we're trained to relatively rapidly get to that to all of that so that we can have a broader picture of the impact as well as the students history. So yes, that is all part of it in standard. 
Great. I'll pop over to you for the outreach for the Counseling Center. Sure, thank you, Lacey. I want to also say thank you to the parents uh, or parents who mentioned um, being pleased to listen to hear about the multiplicity of services that we have here. And I think that bears some emphasis as well that uh, Georgia Tech is one of the most richly uh, resourced campuses that I know about. And um, in my training in psychology, I didn't necessarily, I'm giving away my age here, I guess, but didn't get training in social media. So we sometimes have to um, attend a bit to some of the narratives that are occurring on social media that are not data-based and data-driven in the way Dr. Hughes Troutman was speaking about a few minutes ago. So some of those narratives can be of um, great concern to parents, and I would encourage any parent to remember that uh, Dr. Hughes Troutman and I are both available for consultation if these questions come up about wait times or um, uh, barriers to service or accessibility of services really have been so appreciative and so impressed in my two and a half year tenure at Georgia Tech with the amount of caring concern uh, and the in incredibly interconnected web uh, of services that are available to, to students. Now back to the original question about outreach. Um, there are several days of uh, spring break focus coming up and those are going to be focused on wellness activities. So there are a number of ways that students can get some relief from some of the concerns that were being mentioned like the toll that the remote work takes, the toll that the pandemic is taking, um, coming at a, a difficult time in a young person's life and um, requiring some pretty difficult adjustments that uh, this community, this campus has really risen to the occasion and um, we certainly want all students to feel that they have access to ways to get additional information and support and to decompress a, a bit. So I would um, encourage you to talk with your student and look for um, emails and other information that may give you more detail about the um, upcoming spring break days later this month is followed on with a uh, fresh check week which is a week of um, community-based services that uh, is being offered by not only the counseling center and gt care but also health initiatives and some other campus partners so i don't have a schedule in front of me to speak um, more exactly about the events, but I would like to mention them to you, let you know that they exist and invite you to be watching for information in that direction and encouraging your student to participate. Thank you, uh, Dr. Bradley. One of the questions was about um, how many of these services are free versus pay per service? So some families are not aware of that. Can you uh, talk about that briefly? Yes, yeah, services within the Counseling Center and uh, GT Care are 90%, um, 95%, that's a rough estimation, uh, embedded within student fees. So the student has no out-of-pocket expenses. The rare exception to that is if a student is mandated due to some behavioral concerns around drug and alcohol use, if they are mandated for a drug and alcohol evaluation, there is a charge that accompanies that of, uh, I believe it's $250 for that evaluation. So that's the rare service that's charged for um, through the Counseling Center. Uh, Stamp Psychiatry has a little bit more um, of a fee schedule. And off the top of my head, I believe that there are three to six sessions that are without charge and then um, psychiatric sessions after that have a minimal charge of something in the neighborhood of $25. And what the um, lead psychiatrist has said on many occasions is students are never turned away uh, around financial issues. So there is always a way to meet that need. I don't know if Dr. Hughes Troutman wants to add anything to that. Um, she may have better memory than I do about uh, some of the specifics with um, 
with stamps. Yes. Yes, uh, thank you. And so just to clarify and care, students are not charged additional anything additional than what they are paying for their tuition and fees for care. We our services are, are at a no additional charge uh, in care. So I wanted to state that first with stamps health services. The first three visits are covered through the student health fee. That was actually an expansion of what was previously offered about a year and a half to two years ago. If my memory serves me collection correctly, so those First three visits are covered. Additional visits are at $20 per session and stamps uh, health services. So they really work to expand uh, what stamps can offer in psychiatry, stamp psychiatry. So, so uh, um, we just we've got more questions than I think we're probably going to have time for, but I'm going to hit a couple of these last ones and then again, families feel free to email parents at gotech.edu and uh, we are happy to pass those questions or answer those questions or pass them along to get those answered. Uh, one of the questions was about are these services also available in the summer as, as far as summer school and, and continuity of care in the summer and, and what do you recommend for that? So that's one question. And then there's another question about what is intuitive eating? So if we can maybe address completely different, <laughs> they're not the same question. Sure, I'll, I'll jump on in here uh, really quickly. So yes, uh, there are full range of services are available during the summer. Uh, we are 12 months, so uh, the care services, counseling center, stamp psychiatry and health initiatives all throughout the year. So if your students uh, uh, in, in taking class in the summer, virtually or in person, we we are here and available and that full range of support is really important. Um, summers are great, but we, we feel utilized. It's good because students certainly in care see us and other departments are utilized quite well. So all they need to do is to, um, it's really to stay connected with us. We keep our information up to date as how to access us for care uh, and the counseling center and stamps, uh, stamps health and health initiatives. We are, we are here. Uh, regarding intu intuitive eating, it is an approach that's relatively new, but evidence based. And the, the idea is, as opposed to fixing on uh, eating during certain times of day or eating certain amounts, it's really listening to the internal cues that your body is giving you in terms of hydration and nutritional needs and following that. So stopping when you feel like you're ready to stop and when you feel like you're full, not necessarily finishing a plate, right? Making sure that you have data based upon your unique health needs of how much hydration you should be working on and how and how to really fuel your body. So it's really that intuitive approach that again is shying away from a certain amount of food or a certain portion of food or eating at certain times to really trusting your body, being mindful and letting that guide you. So wonderful. OK, I'm um, I'm going to go ahead and we if you have any other questions, uh, please e again email us at parents at gotech.edu and we will um, get those answer, uh, questions answered for you. I want to thank Dr. Hughes Troutman and Dr. Bradley for taking time out of their busy, busy schedule. They are hardworking, amazing women who make sure that the campus community gets uh, assistance in a variety of different ways, and we appreciate um, all that they do. I know students and families very much appreciate all that you do, so thank you so much, and thank you for taking time to, uh, to join us today for this webinar. This webinar is being recorded. We will post it tomorrow on our website, parents at gotech, excuse me, that's our email, parents.gotech.edu under the Stay Connected tab under the, the virtual recordings. And if you have not already heard, this coming weekend is Spring Family Weekend, and we have a few activities virtual and in person for this weekend. You can learn more and see the schedule at parents.gotech.edu. Just click on Family Weekend. The schedule is there under the Family Weekend main tab. Um, one of the sessions that may be of interest to you is President Cabrera will be hosting a kind of a little bit of a coffee talk on that Monday morning, the 15th at 830. So uh, the link is there in our information. If you have any questions about that, just shoot us an email. Thank you so much for attending today and we hope you're doing well. Take care. Bye-bye.